What's up, motherfuckers? So here's a simple script. Basically, uh, if we just have this input function, and we have this right here. So if is action pressed, toggle visible. We sit, we toggle visibility, and this works just fine. I'm holding V down right now, and when I release it, it's fine. I'm holding V down again, when I release it, it's fine. It's very reliable. Let's say you can't, for some reason, or you don't want to, put some type of um, is action pressed in input. Let's say you want to put in physics process, like let's say if we're uh, checking whether or not we jumped or something. Let's say the jump check relies on some other timers and you want to like uh, set coyote timing. That stuff gets complicated. So here's just a simple example, just to put it in its most simple form. Let's just say we have the spin sprite function. And all it does is spin that sprite around in a circle like you see here. Just goes until it hits a certain point. Then just like starts going the other way, basically increasing or decreasing the radius as we see down here. And that's about it. So it's a pretty simple function. We just run physics process. Let's say we want to turn it off and on with a single key press. Okay. So we're gonna create an action called toggle spin and I'll just add it right here. And there we have it. We have an action in there. And let's just go to uh, S basically, S for physical. And then boom, we have that right there. Let's go to if input dot is action pressed toggle spin. Let's say if for some reason you want to like have it in this input thing. So if you press the toggle spin thing, it's only gonna run while, you ha while you're holding us down, which is the opposite of what we want. Now if you want the opposite, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have a variable up here called is spinning. And we're gonna have this be a Boolean, which is defaulted to false. And then we're gonna have another Boolean called is spinning held down which is uh, testing whether or not we have the spin button held down or not, which is also gonna be false. And uh, now we have that. So let's say is spinning. Let's set that to true when we press this. And then um, we go down here, say if is spinning, then run spin sprite. Okay. Now if we hold down, it goes, and sometimes it stops on there. So uh, what, oh yeah. Is spinning is equal to not spinning, is spinning. So we're toggling it. And see how it's kind of slow? It's because it's only running half the time now. And also, it stops unreliably. Sometimes it stays in the mode, sometimes it doesn't. And it gets a little infuriating. So let's say you don't want that. We could use the is spinning held down. So we want to run and not is spinning held down. And then we run this, we run is spinning held down is equal to true. So now this will make it where it'll only ever toggle spinning and it won't ever turn it off. So we want to also be able to turn it off. So we'll go to elif and go to um, input dot is action just released and spin. Then we'll say is spinning held down equals to false. And then now we have everything we need. So let's go right here. Now if we uh, hold it down, nothing happens, everything's fine. And if we release it, everything's fine. Now if we press it again, it's fine. But if you notice, it only happens once per key press and then it stops doing anything besides that. So it waits until we basically press it again and it goes as fast as we can press it. Because we can't really match the speed of physics process with just our hands. But yeah. There you go. This is all you need to do just to make it, uh, just to have something toggle once. So you have maybe some type of function for each one. This says, this is a function, um, uh, run, spin, sprite, input, or something. And you could just have this, and it could just be some type of void function. And it just checks that. So you just have, so that way it's a bit more organized within physics process. So you can say run, spin, sprite input, and boom, now we have the same thing. And we're uh, running spin sprite right here as a prom. Delta, can any pass through delta, type float. And let's put some delta right there. And boom, now it's run the same way. So th th this is good if you have a bunch of like inputs. Let's say we have another input where we wanna jump. So we can say like run, jump, input, and then we'll like uh, we have we can have this we can have the main jumping algorithm right here and the input algorithm right there. 
so that way we have both of them and then yeah makes things a lot more simple but yeah this is a pretty simple way just to make sure it only runs once per button press now alternatively you could actually just have um, if input is action just pressed but let's say if for the reason you're watching this video is because for some reason this method isn't working for your use case or it over complicates things and you just wanted to use that then that's fine but uh, right here I just also wanted to go over all the input method possibilities and this actually works too so I'm holding it down right now I let go and it's very consistent now I never have any problems with this one so this works just like the, uh, the input one right here but yeah, just uh, letting you know the differences. If you're, so that means if you ever have this uh, a problem with uh, something in the input thing, and let's say it's firing off a bunch of times, you could either use this method or this method. So I've had before where I've had issues with the input. It just keeps running as long as the key is pressed. But that was in Godot 3 at some point. I'm not sure if it's uh, the same anymore. But this is just uh, different ways to handle inputs. And if you just want one key pressed to just run once, whether it's held down or not. Okay, so hope this helped. Peace out, motherfuckers.